Hello, welcome to our 30 Minute Mentor event series where we'll be chatting about getting your career unstuck with writer director Kat Candler. I'm Megan Ross, Stephen Sparks Head of Creator Success. I also want to introduce and thank today's ASL interpreter from the Sign Language Company, Gabe Gomez, for helping us make this event more accessible. Before we kick things off, we'd like to acknowledge the land we are all on is occupied territory. I'm coming to you from the land originally belonging to Jumanos, Tonkawa, Kowitikan, and Kumanchi, um, which is also known as the very gentrified Austin. Um, and since I know it's very, it's hard for us to avoid the news, so I'm going to just very briefly uh, say how I feel, and then we're going to put that aside and focus on something else for the next 30 minutes. But um, call, you know, dialing in from Texas. Um, I think we can all say understatement of the year, we're really freaking exhausted. And I think my frustration um, is definitely has hit its capacity and I don't wanna give advice on what we can do or remind you, oh yes, there's an election where we can vote out Governor Abbott and Attorney General Ken Paxton in November. But instead I'd like to, um, if any of my Texas lawmakers are watching, uh, just tell them to step up and do their goddamn jobs. Um, I, I don't, I think we're at a loss and, um, I'm sorry, Gabe, for having to sign this, but fuck your thoughts and prayers. So that's what I'm going to put out in the universe. Um, uh, lawmakers do your job and we're going to talk about something else for the next 30 minutes. Uh, and sorry to out Kat as a, also a fellow Texan Austinite, but there, there are good parts of Texas, um, as, outside from our lawmakers. So for those who aren't familiar with Seed and Spark, our platform built to support creators, by providing tools for wherever you are in your journey, from crowdfunding and education to impact distribution. We have an 88% success rate, zero platform fees, and a new patron, patron circle where industry leaders can contribute up to $5,000 to your crowdfunding campaign. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce beloved Austin writer-director Kat Candler, whose credits include Queen Sugar, 13 Reasons Why, and Sorry for Your Loss. Her award-winning feature, Helion, starring Aaron Paul and Juliette Lewis, played in competition at the Sundance Film Festival. Her shorts, Helion and Black Metal, both premiered at Sundance. She's currently developing a TV series inspired by the 2005 film Lords of Dogtown for Sony and IMDb TV. Kat, we are so glad to have you with us today. Hi, and I will, I will second your comments as well about what's going on. Yes, so thank, thank you. you for saying that. my not so eloquent, but I don't get paid to do that job yeah. comments. Um, so let's let's talk about the telltale signs of being stuck in your career, because I feel like myself and a lot of friends have had felt this. Um, it took a pandemic for me to realize that I had been stuck for a decade. Um, so I'd love to hear, like, what have you noticed in your own career? What were the 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 red flags for you? Yeah, I mean, so kind of my journey was that I landed in Austin back in the late 90s, this very wide eyed, fresh faced young filmmaker who was going to learn how to make big movies. And I landed in a place with a beautiful independent film scene and just sort of found my my community through a really great you know, Austin Film Society and these other great organizations there and just started making stuff and was making stuff for a while and, you know, had a little bit of success with some short films here and there that would play festivals. But then, you know, all of a sudden some friends were getting into Sundance and I was still in this space. And for me, what happened was I started teaching at the University of Texas and as a lecturer and all of a sudden I had access to equipment. I had these students that were relying on me to um, know what I was talking about. So I had to become a student again um, and re-learn like, and re-watch and um, become that explorative uh, creative again. And I found that being in that student mindset again really kind of pushed me through. I just started making stuff and I mm -hmm. think that's sort of where I found when I get stuck, when I feel, um, you know, just like things aren't going the way, I just start making things because that's what we 
no mm -hmm. one's going to give us permission to write a script, to direct a play, to go make a short film. So much of our career is in our own hands of like mm -hmm. just constantly doing, mm -hmm. um, whether, regardless of what it is, whether it's writing or directing or producing, we can find a way to make things. And for me, it was um, just making things until I couldn't be ignored anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, and then same, like, you know, I've been living in the television space for the last five years, I think five or six years. And when I find that um, I'm not doing the things that I really want to do um, mm -hmm. or telling the stories that I really, really want to tell, I'm like, it's in my hands to go write that script or to, mm -hmm investigate um and then i think too like uh getting out of my space we are mm -hmm. all you know for the last couple of years probably living in our offices or our, our apartments just within our four walls and luckily we're in a time where we can go out again and explore yeah. and i think for me what i love so much about what we do as storytellers is that um, exploration of story and people and going out and being that quiet observer or that quiet listener and like taking in because so mm -hmm. much of the art that we do is from experience and from mm -hmm. the world that we walk through. Um, I think that was probably a long window. <laughs> no, that I like <laughs> it all. I'm going to go for a walk. Um, that, that makes sense. I mean, I, I like when you said like you, you proactively were making stuff because, um, you know, we, we do a goals setting workshop at the beginning of the year and we tell people like they have to be achievable. Like it has to be right. goals within your control. I can't say I want to get staff. That's not within my control. I can say I want to finish the script or I want to make the short. So, um, that is very freeing because you, and you know, that's the same yeah. as our mission is just, you know, getting people to be able to make their own stuff and not wait for someone else to give them permission. Um, and also like, yeah, absorbing, taking in other art, like being a participant in other creative and not just being the creator. My mom's always like, you should, cause I was, you know, doing comedy performing in basements in my early twenties. And she's like, why don't you go see a ballet or like, like something that like is outside the media, yeah. but it's right. Cause like when I go see some, like a medium or a genre, you know, consume a genre that I don't normally consume. It's, it, it makes, inspires me to be a better creator in a different way and brings a different energy to my work. Um, yes. So, and I think yeah. that, you know, being the, the constant researcher, the constant investigative journalist as a storyteller mm -hmm. and, and talking to people or going immersing mm -hmm. yourself in another world or, or space um, absolutely fuels that creative yeah. gasoline, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, you were just saying something that I was going to riff off of. Um, I just totally lost it, but it's going it to come. Ballet thing. Um, well, no, I yeah, think that's that... beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it truly like getting outside of our own artistic medium, whatever it uh -huh. is, and just flexing our muscles where it's drawing or yeah. sculpture or, or music yeah. or art or whatever it is. Um, oh gosh, it was something, it'll come back to me. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll revisit that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's, that's such great advice. Um, can you speak oh, to like now present day in your career, you've had success, um, both in the film and on the TV side of the industry. Do you ever feel like moments where you're stuck, like in between jobs or, or like, you know, questioning what, types of projects you're you're um, taking on? Like, have you ever felt those moments of like, you need to go back to like what you enjoy doing or what you remind yourself um, why you do this? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, television is a medium where, you know, as a director, you are not the ultimate creator. You're not, it's not your ultimate vision and um, ownership. Uh, so being in that space, you can get a little like, oh, I just want to tell my own stories. I just want to like, um, I just want to tell my own stories. And so I intentionally 
started reaching out to friends of mine who I've known for decades from Texas that I grew up with in the film scene and started collaborating with them. And it felt like that magical space long ago, where it's just where a bunch of like, you know, rugrat type of indie <laughs> filmmakers were just going to do it. And mm -hmm. kind of getting back into that spirit of like, hey, do you want to collaborate on this thing? You know, mm -hmm. there's not any money involved until somebody <laughs> green lights or presses a button or something. Mm -hmm. um, but the process of just making things with my friends over the last mm -hmm. couple of years has taken me back to that, that mm -hmm. those magical times that mm -hmm. I had when I first came to Austin. And I was like, I'm going to make stuff and I'm going to find cool yeah. rad people to make it with. Um, yeah. And I think that's part of part of getting unstuck too is going back to like what helped us and shaped us is our community, like mm -hmm. being a part, whether it's helping a friend on a short film or helping um, help, you know, just finding the people to to get. I say this all the time, but to get back on the playground with, mm -hmm. yeah, because um, all of. That my successes have honestly been through my peers that I've grown up with. You know, mm -hmm. it's been those friendships that you forge for literally decades that mm -hmm. you circle back to and you're like, let's just make this thing just to make this thing. Mm -hmm. And then because your heart and soul is so a hundred percent into it, it's the thing that kind of moves you forward. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah. that's very important. Yeah. It's, it's cool to see like, cause like I am very much still in that, like do not get paid for my filmmaking work, but it's cool to look back, especially when I see like um, successful TV and film writers, directors, producers, and then you hear about who their collabor collaborators were like early on. They're, they're still people they work with today. And you're like, Oh, like they had that like passion together before the paycheck, like seeing that like natural, um, teamwork and uh, yeah it's it's very cool to hear about those stories and like I look around yeah in the Austin film scene and I'm like I hope we get to work on stuff like in the next phase of our career together um oh you will because, yeah yeah <laughs> you absolutely will I mean that again like finding those friends and you know kind of riffing off of you like I work on a ton of stuff for free like I, mm -hmm. I work countless hours developing shows with my friends that may mm -hmm. or may not go Mm -hmm. um, it could be a year, it could be two years, but mm -hmm. again, that process of being in our own little mini writer's room together and like mm -hmm. feeling what that is, mm -hmm. um, moves our skills forward and creates mm -hmm. like that energy mm -hmm. that hopefully will translate to getting paid mm -hmm. in a room. But, Definitely. um, but just to, you know, just to say, like, I don't get paid for a lot, like a ton of development that I do yeah, yeah. on my That's own industry, or with yeah. my friends. It's just mm -hmm. the reality. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions. Now we have a wonderful creator who's going to hop on, Lucretia Griffin Pope. Um, and she will have, she has a, another question for you around how to get unstuck in your career. So I'm going to leave and Lucretia is here. Hello. I think, I think you're on mute. Did you, are you still on? Okay, I think Lucretia is having audio issues, so we'll give her a second, um, but I uh, in the meantime, I think let's swap and bring Cameron on and then okay. we'll fix uh, Lucretia's audio issue. Um, yeah, so we'll have Cameron French, uh, another wonderful creator and also a fellow Stephen Sparker. Hey, Cameron. hey, how's it going? Can good. you hear me okay? I hear you good, yeah. <laughs> okay, phew, awesome. All right, well, thank you so much, Kat, for joining us. I'm excited to just kind of absorb some of the the experiences that you've gained, um, you know, in your years working in entertainment and as being a creative overall. Um, and so my question uh, is really, so these last few years um, and months and weeks and now days have felt really hard, like really, really heavy. 
And so you and Megan kind of talked a little bit about how you inspire the ways to, you know, spark different ways to find that creative juice. And so I just wonder what you kind of, you know, spark that creative flow, either, you know, physically or mentally, what are things that you do to help that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I haven't in the last few days, but normally I wake up and I do yoga and I go on a walk and I listen to an audio book while I'm walking and just sort of being in my own head or with a really incredible story that's inspiring me. Um, I, I do a little morning list of everything that I want to accomplish during the day and yoga got and their post a walk. Yep. Yes, it's all on there. And it could be even like, I think the other thing too is we forget that our work as artists is to consume other art, whether that is a movie or a television show or a concert that is fueling us as storytellers as well. And it's okay to go see a movie during the work day because that's part of um, it's part of what we do. Uh, so I, you know, and then I also kind of what Megan was saying, I, I was gifted a, a life coach years ago through Sundance, which was, you know, at first like, what, what am I going to do with a life coach? And then right. I realized, oh, no, 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 it's really, really helpful. And it was putting those goals at the top of that page that I look at once a week. And then I also keep a list of all of my, um, all of my uh, projects that I'm working on in various, you know, phases of development or production or whatnot. But seeing those goals at the top and early on, like some of my goals were like, I need to figure out how to pay rent next month. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, what are my skill sets? My skill sets are teaching film and like teaching. So I would figure out how to do workshops, but then some of my goals were, um, you know, write, finishing that script. Like I just got back from a, a writer's retreat in um, outside of Austin where some filmmaker friends and I were in a house for five days and just writing, you know, mm -hmm. just like we were four. And I come back into my office today and I'm like, why? <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> why am I not doing what I did yesterday? Right. Um, and you, it, it's it's kind of getting yourself out of whether it's the apartment, whether it's the office, and finding like a new kind of rejuvenative. I don't know if that's the right word. You know, a new like fueling to to write. But now it's kind of sliding back into like, okay, now I need to like get back to the writing. Um, so I, there's lists, goals setting, mm -hmm. um, and then finding finding inspiration from new spaces and people as well. Yeah, uh, I, I love that. And I, and I think I have just another second and I, I kind of want to just it. touch upon, um, you keep bringing up this sense of community, you know, finding Huge. your people and then, you know, bringing each other along the journey, whether it's your own successes or others. So I just kind of like to hear like, what are some some ways where you have that aha moment or like to be like oh, this person like we're kindred spirits i have a feeling we're gonna go far together what are some of those kind of light bulbs for you i don't even know that it's the idea of going far it's like a particular story that i want to explore or adapting a book that i'm like oh my gosh this this writer this friend has this voice that i'm just like so jealous of that i can not only collaborate with, but also learn from. Um, I think that's, again, kind of going back to that, that idea of being a student always is like, who, who can I learn from and who can I grow from and who makes a really nice compliment to my artistic sensibilities and skill sets and all of that. So um, I think that's where a lot of the, the matchmaking comes from because I have a bunch of different friends on a bunch of different projects and also, um, I know what their interests are. It's like, oh my gosh, this person is totally into this thing. And I know that I really want to do something in that world. And so let's have a conversation and figure out what that might be. Um, but, and I just, I like hanging out with my friends, you know? Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so what better way outside of, you know, just hanging out and shooting the shit, but like, what better mm -hmm. way to like, 
just create something and, and make believe with your friends for a while. There's a yeah. lot of joy in that. And then you're kind of fooled. You're, you're, you realize, oh, wait, we're being productive as we hang out and mm -hmm. talk about story <laughs> too. Absolutely. Which is icing on the cake. Yeah. yeah. I love that so much. Thank you so much for answering my questions. I think Megan's going to jump on. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Cameron. Hello. Um, perfect timing. Lucretia got her um, mic working, so Yay. she will come on and ask her question now. Oh, and great. I will go back behind the curtain. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Can you hear me now? I hear you great. Yes. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Oh, no. So thank you for the conversation. Oh, no. Oh, I think you were breaking up for a hot second. Oh, okay. But I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Okay. <laughs> so my question um, is uh, for early, oh, is it for early career um, folks like me who are just starting out? Yeah. Uh, uh, so how do you handle um, or maneuver around being stuck or put into a certain box within the industry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just to kind of repeat the question, early on in your career, how do you get unstuck with being boxed into a certain, whether it's like a certain genre or certain like directing, writing or whatnot? Um, you know, I think, I think what's exciting yes. early on is just exploring what your voice is and being okay with that. Like when I was, you know, making short films and indie features back like uh, in my, in my twenties, um, I was doing different genres. I was taking chances on, and taking risks on um, a crazy comedy that I would do. Like literally I made a, a short film for 800 bucks in all in my apartment. And it went on to play a bunch of festivals and I'd never, I'd never done a comedy before, but it was such a fun sort of flexing my, my muscles, my film muscles to see like, can I do that? Um, or right, I wrote a thriller a, a terrible teen thriller just to see if I could figure out the mechanics of writing a thriller. Um, and so all of that is adding to your toolkit. And also like as a writer too, like being able, being able to explore all of these genres, I think is super helpful because at the baseline of it all is just writing really rich, great layered characters. And if you can do that across genres, um, telling a great story, having beautiful universal themes. Um, that's, I think, as someone who gets to hire writers, what I'm always looking for, it could be horror, it could be action, but can they tell a really, can they create really great characters that I just want to hang out with, whether it's hanging out of a helicopter or screaming for their life and, you know, I, in a horror film, like, I want to be able to like hang on to beautiful, rich characters in whatever genre. So at the end of the day, I think as a writer, exploring those genres is amazing because when you're submitting to um, like a writer's, a television writer's room, you might submit a different genre than what that show is. But if I can see or the creator can see that that writer has chops with character with story at the end of the day that's what i would be really looking for but i think starting out in your career is such a, a a magical time again to just like try things you know take risks and just be bold and brave with your with your storytelling because at the end of the day that's what really pops on people's screens or when they get to read your writing it's like oh they're not playing around. They're like totally upping the game and out of the box and like really wild, unique, cool stories. Um, so that's where I think 
take those swings, man, like really take those swings because as we get older, we get like a little bit more set in our ways and kind of tired stories. And I'm like, man, take those risks, try things. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, um, we're hitting the end of the event. We've covered a lot of great um, advice and I don't want to take up too much time. Um, but yeah, in the chat, everyone's basically like plus wanting everything that's been said. Um, so I think a lot of us are in this quote and, um, and are now, you know, armed with some really great advice to go get unstuck. So I wanted to thank you again, Kat, for your generosity oh, yeah. and time today. Um, thank you to Lucretia and Cameron for those thoughtful questions. Our ASL interpreter, Gabe Gomez, and the sign language company, Julian Tech, and Danny and Kat, and to our, in the chat, and to our wonderful audience for watching and engaging at home for this discussion. Um, so if you enjoyed today's event, you can catch our next 30 Minute Mentor with filmmaker Jason Reitman on Wednesday, June 16th at 11 a.m. PT, 2 p.m. ET. And um, check out more events at seedandspark.com slash events. Thank you and have a great rest of your week and take care of yourselves, everyone. Thank Bye. You.